Yo, people, yo, people. So in a beautiful turn of events, RFK Jr. showed up at a Trump rally to endorse him for president. And so let's have a listen to why he did this. And can you give any time that you look back in history and say that the people who were censoring were the good guys? They're always the bad guys. Because it's always the first step down that slippery slope to totalitarianism. Don't you want a safe environment for your children? Oh, you want to? Oh, you want to know that the food that you're feeding them is not filled with chemicals that are going to give them cancer and chronic disease? And don't you want a president? That's going to make America healthy again. Thank you all very, very much, and God bless you, and God bless America. So there you go, there you go. He says the governments that can silence their opponents also have license to commit atrocities. That is true. And he says the censorship is the slippery slope to authoritarianism. That is 100% true as well. And of course, he's referring to the fascistic behavior of the Biden-Harris administration, the corrupt politicians that will ironically enough tell you how much of a fascist dictator Donald Trump is. I mean, it's, it's utterly insane, right? We see that we saw the censorship during the pandemic, right? We saw how, for example, there was the famous case of those guys on I think they did it like a live stream on Facebook or something where they were talking about how ineffective lockdowns were. And for that, they were censored. Misinformation. And I've been thinking a lot about this mis and disinformation stuff, right? And obviously, these are just buzzwords used by the establishment. What a lot of the time is what they mean by mis and disinformation is if not information that is necessarily untrue. But a lot of the time, it's information that they don't want you to hear because it is opposed to their narrative. That is why, like I said, the best example is what they did with that lockdown video. They shut it down. Not because it was wrong, because lockdowns did fuck all to help anybody. Let's be real about this. They didn't shut it down because the guys on the video were lying. They shut it down because the guys on the video were not lying. They shut it down because the guys in the video had a point. And the Biden-Harris administration and their lackeys in the media and the social media companies and wherever else decided you are not allowed to hear this. These people want to control the flow of information. And this is actually funny because this is what happens, right? When you decide, as a lot of Democrats have, to replace God with government, when you decide to give ultimate power over your life to those idiots, the morons of the Biden-Harris administration, this is what happens, right? These people, they are so hubristic. They seem to have a God complex because they believe that they should control exactly what you should hear at all times. I don't understand what else you want to call it. It has to be, a, it sounds to me like a God complex. It's like these people think they're gods. Like they think that they know everything and so therefore they should get to decide what you hear. But as is blatantly obvious, these people are false gods. That's what they are. They are liars. They are corrupt. They are disgusting. They censor you not because you are wrong. Because if you are wrong, and it is obvious that you are wrong, everybody will see that, right? When you say something, that is clearly and obviously untrue. If I hop on here, hop on this YouTube channel and say two plus two is eight, right? Most of you can discern that what I am saying is complete bullshit, right? You don't need big daddy government to come along and censor me for mis and disinformation. You don't need that because it is obvious to you that I am chatting shit. But what is happening is there are too many people who are deciding to not exercise their own common sense they would rather big daddy government come in and tell them what is true and what is untrue instead of exercising their own reason. And I mean, this is how you end up with a bunch of Democrats who believe all kinds of rubbish. They believe the vaccine saved lives. They believe that inflation is most certainly at 3%. These are the same people that went to the DNC and were celebrating joyous vibes, dancing, right? And they have no clue why they're dancing. The reason they're dancing and joyous is not because they actually feel any joy. You can feel the enthusiasm in this crowd, right? Donald Trump is not commanding these people to cheer and be joyous for RFK. They just chose to. Whereas at the DNC, the whole thing is manufactured, right? The whole thing is 
dictated by the Democratic Party. Those people didn't go there joyous to listen to Michelle and Barack and Bill Clinton and all the rest. No, no sane person is giddy about listening to that shit. No one. No one's giddy about listening to Kamala. The reason why they went there and they were acting like this is because the Democratic Party told them to. It's because they've been instructed by the Democrats and the establishment to do so. And so they obeyed. Nothing about what the Democrats are doing is remotely authentic. It's all this kind of weird, like, semi-brainwashing that's going on. It's, it's gaslighting and brainwashing. It's all kinds of craziness. And RFK is right to call this out. I, I don't see why I should allow these corrupt idiot bureaucrats to control the flow of information. Fuck that. Fuck that. I mean, seriously, you want, you want, you want me to give control over the flow of information that, that what people are allowed to hear to what Joe Biden, to Kamala? Are you people insane? No, no. That's what most normal people say. But because Democrats are so brainwashed and they've decided to replace God with the Democratic Party in some cases, they're happy to allow this to happen. It's insanity. And of course, this power has been and will be abused. The government will just use it to shut down things that are inconvenient to them. We see we see kind of a good example of that in the United Kingdom right now. We elected the radical socialists because we were stupid and we have this kind of uniparty mindset where if you don't vote Tory, you just have to vote Labour. And so we ended up with a Labour supermajority and we ended up with Prime Minister Starmer. And now look, he's going running around arresting you for your social media posts, right? You are actually in the United Kingdom now getting more time in prison for what you say on social media than you would do if you sexually assaulted a minor or killed one. I wish that was a joke. It is not. That is what happens when you elect these radical socialist idiots. These people who are so hubristic, so drunk with power that they believe they should have full control over what you say. I should also touch briefly on what he said about the all the stuff that they put in the food in America. Right? I've been to America a couple of times and I'll be honest with you, I don't know what you fuckers put in your food but you put something in there, bro. There's something in that food. I don't know what it is. Maybe we have it in Europe as well. I don't know, to be honest with you, but I don't know. There's something different about American food that is very, very odd. It seems to be very, very addictive as well. That's why Americans are, I mean, frankly, very obese. <laughs> That's kind of why. Because it seems like whatever they're putting in the food is extremely addictive. He says it's leading to cancer and is making everybody unhealthy. And I think it's good to mention that kind of stuff as well, because it is kind of an underrated issue. Obesity is a big problem. Obviously, it lowers life expectancy and, you know, it kills people. And so it's good to hear somebody talk about the kind of addictive substances that a lot of you Americans, a lot of people in general have pushed on them in their food products, stuff that is not good for you. And of course, it is almost certainly designed to just get you buying more food, hence more profits for the people selling you the food. And that kind of stuff really shouldn't be allowed. You shouldn't be getting people hooked on unhealthy things through addictive substances, right? That's not too dissimilar, frankly, from drug addiction, in all honesty. And so I, it's good to hear somebody call this stuff out. In a moment, I'm going to get into some of what Donald Trump said as well. But this is the appeal of RFK. RFK is actually in touch with the American people. He actually understands their real issues. He actually understands what's really plaguing them. Right. Not like you go to the DNC and it's all just about like the same old tribe. Donald Trump is mean and bad and horrible and we're amazing. Woo. Joy. Abortions and vasectomies. Woo. Like that's all bullshit. That's complete nonsense. No serious person who hasn't been at least partially brainwashed by the Democratic Party takes any of that crap seriously because it's not serious. It's unserious garbage. Right. It should be a bipartisan point that. What RFK said here is very serious. Censorship is a problem because governments do not have the right to have complete control over the flow of information. That's tyrannical and disgusting. And you should address one of the most underrated problems in American life, which is the obesity problem. Make America healthy again, he says. Now, I, I will say that there was a little bit of me that was like, well, Donald Trump isn't exactly a picture book of health. He's not exactly a man with a six pack, but I still appreciate that they are going to make an effort on this, on tackling what clearly is a big issue in America. But let's now listen to what Donald Trump had to say. Can't even believe I have to say this. Nearly assassinated in Pennsylvania last month. Bobby called me to express his best wishes. 
He knows firsthand the risks incurred by leaders who stand up to the corrupt political establishment. When you stand up, you bring on some trouble for yourself, but you have to do what's right. You have to do what's right for the country. I, I will tell you, we are both in this to do what's right for the country. That's one thing I can tell you. He lost his father and uncle in service to our country, and Bobby himself was subject to repeated threats to his safety during the course of his campaign while being denied protection by the Harris-Biden administration. And this is a tribute in honor of Bobby. I am announcing tonight that upon my election, I will establish a new independent Presidential Commission on Assassination Attempts. And they will be tasked with releasing all of the remaining documents pertaining to the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. And they will also conduct a rigorous review of the attack last month. So there you go, there you go, right? It is interesting to me that like 60 odd years after our, after JFK was assassinated, the American people still don't have access to the documents. I mean, you have to wonder how this actually functions as a democracy, right? Because if your bureaucrats are just blatantly hiding information from you, are just refusing to tell you things that they really don't have any reason to hide, especially not now. I think Tucker made this point on Joe Rogan. He was like, well, everybody you know, involved in the case is already dead, right? Everybody involved in that whole debacle is, is dead. There's not, it's not like there's anybody left to protect. And nonetheless, you still don't have full access to the documents regarding the JFK assassination. You don't. And I find that to be very, very suspicious. A lot of people find it suspicious because, frankly, they think the the CIA was involved. Now, disclaimer, I would never run alive myself. The CIA theory does kind of, like, it does hold some weight. A lot of people suspect that the CIA was involved in the assassination of JFK. And people want to know the answer because no sane individual believes the story that they sold you with JFK. And people believe it even less so now, seeing as they're kind of trying to sell you the exact same story regarding what happened to Donald Trump. It was a lone gunman. Oh, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Lone gunman, was it? Ah. And in JFK's case, it was even more suspicious because that lone gunman was then killed by another lone gunman. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nothing, nothing suspicious there at all. Right, so the American people have been suspicious about this for years. There's a reason why the JFK assassination is talked about. Because it's one of the most historical events in American history. And yet, the American people don't seem to really understand what happened. They don't know what happened. They've had no confirmation on who killed JFK and why. You know, the American people aren't buying the idea that this was a lone gunman who was then killed by another lone gunman. No no, no one believes that. Get, get out of here. The same with, with Trump's assassination. Nobody is seriously believing that there's just some lone gunman who somehow got on that rooftop unseen, even though, from what, I, from what I've been hearing, Police actually were informed, like, I think minutes prior to the attempt that he was on that rooftop. In fact, I've seen video of people at that rally filming the guy while he's climbing on the rooftop, like filming him, like, look, and, and saying, look, there's a guy up there. There's a guy up there. I've seen this. And so I think it is at least credible. And so... There did definitely seem to be something dodgy going on. I don't know who else was involved, frankly. The idea that this crooks fellow was just some lone gunman. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe that, of course. Very believable. Well, what's, it's, what's important about this is to kind of expose the deep state. This is one thing that needs to be cleaned out, right? Donald Trump made a good effort in trying to drain the swamp. But now it's time to drain another swamp and that is the swamp of the deep state it seems like in america everything is classified it's very hard for voters to make an informed decision when every bit of information is fucking classified everything is hidden and that doesn't mean that everything should be publicly available there are genuine national security reasons why you shouldn't just reveal everything to the public but 
Stuff like this, stuff like the JFK assassination, there is no logical reason to hide this stuff. Unless there is culpability from the people in charge who are, in fact, hiding it, and they wish to conceal their culpability. Which is what I and many people suspect may well be the case. But yeah, that, that should be interesting. You know, it's good to, it's good to see these issues talked about. It's, it's, it's always, you get bored of politicians hopping up on stage and saying, they're going to make your life better. I'm going to change the tax rates and blah, 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 blah. But this kind of stuff is seriously important. What, what RFK Jr. or Donald Trump have said here in these two clips I played for you, these are actually things that are important to the American people. And they're things that, frankly, nobody else seems interested in discussing or doing anything about. So it's good to see that at least somebody is in touch with the American people, not the, not the other crew that's handing out abortions and vasectomies and talking about vibes and feels and, you know, all this rubbish, right? That's, that's, that's all manufactured garbage. But yeah, let me know what you lot think down below. Let me know if you disagree. I'm sure there will be some. And uh, yeah, please remember to like and subscribe, people, and see ya.